ready to jump into scripture? Can we take a moment and welcome all of our friends who are joining us online through that camera lens right there, Genesis Church. I love it. Before we do, um, upstairs and G Kids, they're heading into scripture at the same time as us. And I'm thankful for a kids team that is sowing scripture into the hearts of your little ones. Today, their big idea, I can count on God. Huh. Seven-year-old walking out knowing, I can count on God. Their verse, God is our protection and our strength. He always helps in times of trouble. I can count on him. He's a helper. So at home discussion, man, this is a great way that God helps us by showing love and forgiveness. So your at home discussion tonight, how do we show the love and forgiveness that God has shown us? What a cool conversation to have with your kiddos. How do we show the love and forgiveness that God has shown us? Man, I love that. God, as the word is going forth, not just here but upstairs also, do what only you can do. Make it come alive on the inside of us. God, whatever is just merely human, whatever is wood or straw, God, would you just burn it away? But God, if it's from you, sow it deep into our hearts that we would be different, we would be better, we would be changed. God, we submit our ears, we submit our hearts, we submit our minds, and we say, speak, Lord, we're listening. We love you, and we pray you're glorified here today in Jesus' name. Amen. I got a message for you titled today, Change Your Mind. We're in the second, second week of our money talk. And actually at the 8.30, um, I never even got to preach this message. Like God was just moving and so we got to pray with people and I spoke from Hebrews 10 like on the fly. And so you're going to catch YouTube replays this week and you're going to get two sermons this week in Jesus' name. It was fun. I like that. I grew up in like a mad Pentecostal church that like, I feel like half the weekends are like, we're not even going to preach. We're just going to pray for people. And I was just feeling that. So we got real Pentecostal up in here at the 830 in Jesus' name. I got a message for you titled, Change Your Mind. Last week the message was called, Fix Your Focus. And we're trying to get our money right. Anybody trying to get your money right? Can you imagine what your life was like if your money was right? Like the way you handle and manage your finances is affecting Every single area of your life. This is not news to you. You know this. Every area of your life, marriage, kids, job, every, the way that you are managing, the way that you're making decisions, the way that you're carrying money in your heart, whether it's mastering or not is what we looked at last week. Who's the master? You got to fix your focus. It's, it's bleeding into every area of your life. Jesus talked about money a lot. He talked about anxiety about money. And so I'm going to try and help us grow. We're trying, to, we're trying to grow our money. Anybody trying to grow your money? Okay, if you want to grow your money, you got to grow you first. My son, um, Solomon, he's two, and is like, you know, that time of life where they're having growing pains, and he's waking up in the middle of the night crying, and so he's, he cries a lot, and I'll go in and pray with him. I'm like, buddy, what's going on? He's like, my foot. Like, I think it's your knee or your leg, but foot, whatever, we'll pray for your foot. And I'm praying for his foot, and he, I'm like, all right, buddy, I love you. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> okay. And he goes back to sleep. And so the other night, he was, he was crying, and I went into his room, and I'm like, I was like, what's wrong, buddy? And he goes, Daddy, I'm growing. <laughs> and, like, my heart just broke. Daddy, I'm growing. He just looks at me. I'm growing. And I thought, how true is that even in our lives, and our worlds, and our Christian walk that it's like, Daddy, I'm growing. Like, this sucks, and I hate it, and I'm changing, and I'm making decisions that I don't want to make, and I'm giving up different habits. But like, Daddy, I'm growing. <laughs> like, here's the funny thing about growing. It's exciting to think about, and it's painful to endure. Like, thinking about growth, thinking about growing your money is fun to think about, but it is painful to endure. Because growing, here's what happens in growth, it forces a stretch beyond your current limits. Like, his, his body is literally growing beyond its current limits. Stretching, the bones are getting bigger, they're mashing together. You're talking about... Gains in the gym, gains with like 12 Z's. Gains, bruh. Some of y'all hashtag gains, and I'm making fun of you literally right now. 
He's making fun of me. You're right, I am. What is that doing? It's the growth there is it's stretching you beyond your current limits. And before, before you can grow your wealth, you gotta grow yourself. Like, like at, at the core of every decision you are making, not just financially, every decision in your life is being driven by some mindsets that you have. You might be sitting in a particular financial outcome and situation right now. That, that outcome was created by your habits. The place you find yourself financially right now, the outcome that you're currently experiencing, is created by the habits that you have with your money. Your habits are formed by your actions, and, and actions are driven by mindsets. Here's what I'm trying to get at today. I'm trying to walk back through the chain. I don't necessarily particularly want to talk about outcomes today. I want to talk about some mindsets. Because mindsets drive your actions, which form your habits that create your outcome. Mindsets are, are driving your actions. Every area of your life. Driving your actions. And your actions forming habits that are creating the outcome. You don't have to raise your hand, but is there anybody in this room who would like a different financial outcome? I said you didn't have to raise your hand, Wendy. Nobody on camera saw that, but now you know Wendy raised her hand, if you know who Wendy is. I said your name so many times right there. I'm going to try and help us grow. And growth is going to require change and stretching and being uncomfortable. It's going to require you changing some mindsets, changing the way that you think about money. Last week, we, we talked about mastering money. Here, I want to talk about managing. And next week, we're going to talk about multiplying money. Because I fully believe that it is the responsibility of every Christian person to multiply your wealth as much as you can to build the kingdom. Not for the sake of being rich and famous and TMZ following you around, but because we got freaking work to do. In Jesus' name. Be faithful even with this church, apparently. <laughs> Jesus, in Matthew chapter 6, we read verse 19 through 24 last week. I'm going to pick up in 25 through 34. We're going to read 10 verses here together today. Matthew chapter 6. If you don't have your Bibles, I'm going to be up above my head on the sky board. I'm reading from the ESV today. Scripture says this. This is Jesus. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious. Well, that was easy. Duh, Jesus. You ever read stuff in scripture and you're like, duh, thanks. Jesus goes, don't be anxious about your life. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, thanks. I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, I could just not be anxious? Great. Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? He says this, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than some birds? Which is what I am. And which of you, by being anxious, there's that word again, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. When was <laughs> Scripture's funny. Sometimes it catches me off guard. When was the last time you put on an outfit and you were like, I'm arrayed in Fendi? <laughs> it's so weird. Oh. Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. <laughs> so funny. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, 
which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious. Do you see a theme going on here? Jesus starts out talking about money, about talking about who's the master. You got to fix your focus. And then he just launches, he, he talks about anxiety in the terms of money more than anxiety in any other way. You think Jesus had something figured out about us? Can you imagine if you showed up to one of Jesus' sermons and here's what he says, don't be anxious. You were like, I came to see people raised from the dead. And he goes, don't be anxious. And you're like, sweet Jesus. Do not be anxious. Saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God. This is Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Jesus seems to be communicating that our anxiety comes from a, a, an inappropriate seeking. All these things will be added to you. Therefore, and he says it again, therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Mindsets are driving your actions, it's forming your habits, it's creating your outcome. So what do, what do I need to change my mind about? What causes, just in part time, what causes financial anxiety? I don't know about you, this is an answer for me. So we're going to go with it because I got the mic. I think causes financial anxiety is just worry about not having enough. Worry about not having enough. The outcome in your life is that you're experiencing anxiety and financial stress, stress and financial pressure. But what we do know is that those outcomes at the, at, at the root of them come from some mindset. So I'm going to try and help you change your mind. Because at the root of all those habits, here's what I believe. You, you have an identity struggle going on. It's an identity struggle. Three questions. Who am I? Who is he? And what is life? The answer, the way you answer those three questions is driving, I would argue, driving every action in your life. Who am I? Is this not like the question of life? Who am I? Who am I? Who is he? What the heck is that even worth? You know, the answers to those three questions are driving every area of your life. They're driving every, at the core. Because your, your mindsets are driving your actions, the way you think, the way you think about yourself, the way you answer this question, who am I, is driving the decisions that you're making. Maybe you could ask yourself this question in the financial context. Who am I outside of this money? Like outside of this carefully crafted persona. I'm trying to help you grow. Oh, I'm growing. No. Outside of this carefully crafted persona. Like if this all went away, if the job went away, if the money went away, if the eyelash subscription went away, it's a real thing. Who am I? If everything, if all of this went away, if all of, isn't this what's driving the anxiety? If all of this stuff went away, 
would you know who you were? Maybe, maybe your, your proverbial knees are starting to ache a little bit. Here, here's what I'm not doing. I'm not attacking your eyelashes here. I'm not attacking the things that you have. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking you to consider the fact and, and to ponder, do you know who you are outside of these things? Because if you are confident about who you are outside of what you own and outside of the persona you've crafted, then if it all went away, it doesn't matter because you know who you are outside of that stuff. And what's driving the anxiety is, is, is if I lose the house, then I can't be in the HOA meetings. And maybe you're like, praise God, no more HOA meetings. But, but then my, the, my kids can't go to that school, and then everybody thinks that I'm a failure because, and, and, and you start processing, going, and it's causing anxiety because, because maybe, just maybe you don't know who you are outside of this persona. I'm trying to help you change your mind. I'm not going to give you an answer to who are you. I'm, I'm going to leave that to you to, to search the scriptures and know. But what I do know is, is a lyric that we just sang that, that you are chosen, not forsaken. Even if everything went away, the carefully crafted persona, all the followers, the shoes, all that stuff went away. It does not change one iota the way that your father in heaven feels about you. And you're like, well, yeah, that's nice, but the love of my father in heaven does not help pay for my kid's school. You're right. That's not the point that Jesus is making. In fact, this word anxiety that he's saying over and over and over and over again means undue concern. Do not be unduly concerned. Maybe you've heard this passage of scripture preached before and, and it's come across to you as like, don't worry about tomorrow. Like, don't think about it. He's not saying don't think about tomorrow. He's saying don't be unduly concerned for what's coming. He's saying be concerned, don't be consumed. I'm not telling you to not be concerned about tomorrow. I'm saying don't be consumed about tomorrow. You should be concerned about tomorrow. In fact, maybe some of your anxiety is being driven by you weren't concerned about what was coming tomorrow. So you ate all your bread today and you got to wake up every morning trying to get this bread because you ate it all yesterday. and You didn't save any for tomorrow. The scripture says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You know what you do with seed? You sow it. You don't eat it. You eat all your seed. You got nothing for tomorrow. You turn all your seed into bread. He's not saying don't be concerned about tomorrow he's just saying don't be consumed by it don't be unduly concerned don't be unduly concerned about what people are going to think about you if you have to stop taking your kid to that preschool because you can't afford it anymore because it's not actually really the money that's keeping you up at night it's this carefully crafted persona that you're afraid that you'll lose if the money went away outside of all of that stuff would you know who you were answering the question who am i is driving your actions who am I? I'm trying to set up questions for you and your connect groups. I hope that you sit in living rooms and you weep together and go, I, I don't have an answer for that question. And then somebody just starts to speak life into you. And they start speaking the word of God to you and faith starts rising up. And you start to see who you are outside of the persona that you've so carefully crafted for yourself. This whole process of studying this message was an exercise in growth for me because it forced me to ask myself that question. Who am I outside of this stuff? Like if all this went away, would I know who I was? Because the answer to that question is driving my actions. Who am I? It's the first question you got to answer. Secondly, who is he? I was talking with somebody about this uh, yesterday at a, a coffee shop. I was pouring over my notes again, and he said, I know all the answers in my head, but I'm having a hard time connecting it to my heart. <laughs> Is that not a perfect description of, of, of renewal, regeneration, the process of sanctification? <laughs> Is I know what to say. I know the Lord is my provider, but I'm having a hard time connecting head to heart. 
Who is he? Because your answer to that question is driving actions. That mindset is driving actions that are forming habits that are creating outcomes. Every habit is just, is just subconscious actions that you're taking. I have this habit, and maybe you other husbands do, that every time I walk by my wife, I smack her butt. Too much information? Who cares? Welcome to Genesis Church. Like, I can't not. It's just like, it's just like a habit. I don't even think about it. A habit is just like a subconscious action. You have to think about it. And, and mindsets are driving those actions that are forming those habits that are creating the outcomes that you're sitting in. It's really easy to blame your circumstance for your outcome, but you got there because of your habits. But you understand, I lost my job. But if you had different habits before, you would have had some bread set aside in case, in case you lost a job. But you don't understand, they cut my hours. But if you had different habits and you weren't at sushi four nights a week, then, then maybe you would have had some bread left over in the bank. And you wouldn't have to hashtag trying to get this bread. You'd have been like, got this bread, it's in my bank account, I'm fine. I'm growing, oh, I'm growing, daddy, I'm growing. <laughs> I love that I've been able to say get this bread so many times in this message, like I'm actually cool, I'm a 33-year-old dad, I don't know what's cool. Is he, so who is he? I ask you, 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 you have to figure this out. Is he? I'm not saying this mental ascent, he's my provider. I'm asking, you ask yourself, is he my provider? Like who am I outside of this, this carefully crafted persona? Who is he? Is he my provider and can I trust him? Because you know what to say in your head. Some of you, you're having a hard time connecting it to heart. And the way you think about God, the way you think about who he is, is driving the actions that are forming the habits that are creating the outcomes. Like, who is he? Is he provider? And can I trust him? Can I tell you, if you're having a hard time connecting head to heart, you are not the only one that's having that struggle. You are not alone in that struggle. And in fact, we have a faithful, loving, caring, sustaining God who, who James tells me, the apostle James says that if any of you lack understanding, if you lack wisdom, you can ask him and the God who gives liberally will pour it out upon you. It is a perfectly legitimate prayer. God doesn't get angry if you go, God, hey man, What's up with that putting my clock ahead one hour thing? That was mean. Secondly, I'm having a hard time connecting head to heart. I need you to help me. I'm having a hard time believing that you are my provider. And I need you to help me. I'm, gonna have a, I'm having a hard time trusting. Like I believe that you're, that you're a provider, but I'm having a hard time trusting that it's going to come through. You could say that to God. You can pray that and God doesn't go, my goodness, if you were just holy. He's like, I'm so glad you're talking to me about this. Who am I? Who is he? And what is life? Matthew 6, 25, Jesus says, is not life more than food and your body more than clothing? Who am I? Who is he? And what is life? Because your determination about what the purpose of this life is, is driving the actions that are forming the habits that are creating the outcomes in your life. What is it? Is it for me to be here for 75 years or 130 if medical science continues to advance and, and I just try and run out the clock and then, or is this life? Is it a gift that's been given to me to build the kingdom of God, to see as many people as possible who don't know him come to the knowledge and the saving power of the cross of Jesus Christ? And the way you answer that question, what is life? I'm not giving you the answer. I'm just telling you the way that you answer that question is, is driving your actions. They're forming your habits that are creating the outcomes in your life. And if your answer to what is life is accumulate as much as I can, to create this persona, then cool, go for it, man. But I'm telling you, you better hope that that carefully crafted persona is what's giving you peace in your heart. 
And you better hope that that carefully crafted persona is what's giving you joy in your life. And you and I both know at a very deep level that that is not the answer. I'm not telling you to not have things. I'm just wanting to make sure that those things do not have you. There is no problem having things as long as the things don't have you. Who am I? And I want you to ponder these. Outside of, if all of this went away, if everything that I've spent my life building, if what my friends think that I am, if what my family thinks that I am, if what my boss thinks that I am, if all of that went away, this carefully crafted persona, if it all went away, who, who am I outside of that? Who is he? Do, do I believe him? Some of you, you're going to have to change your mind. You have to change your mind about some stuff. You fixed your focus. And, and now you're going to have to change your mind about some things. You have to change your mind about who you are. You have to change your mind about who he is. You have to change your mind about what this life is about. Because the way you are answering that is driving literally at that core. The core of your outcomes is an identity struggle. It's a wrestle. It's a battle. We're going to get our money right. We're going to grow our, grow our wealth. We've got to grow ourselves. We've we, we got to get those things right. And I'm praying that God helps you to discover through you, through the process of following him, through, through praying together in, in, in living rooms, in connect groups, and maybe it's growth track for you. Maybe it's a conversation you have with a coworker at work that you didn't even know was a Jesus follower, and they drop a bomb on you right there in that moment because the Holy Spirit is present in your cubicle, not just in a church building. And you get some direction, and God helps you change your mind to answer the question of who you are, who he is, and what this life is for. Because the way you answer those is driving, it's driving your actions, forming your habits, creating your outcomes. Anybody want some better outcomes? Yeah? I want some better outcomes. So it's gonna, it's gonna force me to change my mind. Change my mind a little bit. Can we, can we make a commitment to be the kind of church that is willing to change our minds? From unhealthy thought patterns, unhealthy ways that we think about ourselves, that we think about God, we think about this life. We're gonna win. You are gonna win. I believe that about you, that you are a doer of the word and not just a hearer. If Jesus says, don't be unduly concerned, that you don't have to carry that weight. In Jesus' name. Can we stand together? I want to pray for us. God.